Six Minute English from bbclearningenglish.com. Hello, this is Six Minute English from BBC Learning English. I'm Neil. And I'm Georgina. COVID 19 has changed everyday life for people in countries around the world. But coronavirus wasn't the first pandemic to cause mass sickness and disrupt daily life. Between 2002 and 2004, an outbreak of the disease known as SARS, or Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, caused hundreds of deaths in southern China before spreading to other parts of the world. The virus that caused SARS survived by mutating, changing as it reproduced itself in the bodies of infected people, and this caused the virus to create. Strains, slight variations of the original. COVID 19, the disease caused by the strain of the original SARS virus we are experiencing now, has been called SARS 2. In this program, we'll be looking at the origins of COVID 19 and hearing new evidence about the scale of the threat we face from the disease. And of course, we'll be learning some new vocabulary as well. But first, it's time for our quiz question. We know that white blood cells make up part of the immune system our body needs to fight infectious diseases like COVID 19. But how many white blood cells per microliter does the average adult human need? Is it A, 7,000, B, 17,000, or C, 70,000? Mmm, in that case, I'd say more is better. So C, 70,000. Okay, we'll find out the answer at the end of the program. Now, Georgina. You mentioned that the disease spreading across the world today wasn't the first COVID 19 type disease. That's right. In fact, a recent research project in China has identified over 700 different types of coronavirus carried by bats. Some of these virus strains are thought to have already crossed over to humans. Dr. Peter Dasak of New York's Eco Health Alliance thinks that new strains of the virus have the potential to cause future pandemics. He spent years in the Chinese countryside looking for the coronaviruses that could jump from bats to humans. Here he is talking to the BBC World Service programme Science in Action. It would have been great to have found the precursor to SARS 2, but what would have been even better is to have found it before SARS 2 emerged and raised the red flag on it and stopped the outbreak. But we didn't do that. What we were looking for were, at the time, our hypothesis was that SARS 1. The original SARS virus, which we all thought had disappeared, was still out there in bats. And that was what we were looking for. So we found a lot of SARS 1 related viruses. COVID 19 may have been contained if scientists had known more about the disease's precursor. That's a situation which existed before something and led to the development of that thing. Here, the precursor of COVID 19 was the original SARS 1. Any new cases of the virus would have been a red flag for another outbreak, a symbol of danger that some action needs to be taken. Dr. Dasak believed that some form of SARS remained in bats and based his investigations on this hypothesis, an idea which is suggested as a possible explanation of something but which has not yet been proved correct. Another scientist working to prevent new epidemics is the pathologist Professor Mary Fawkes. The original SARS was treated as a respiratory disease which attacked the lungs. But when working with infected patients, Professor Fawkes noticed that COVID 19 was damaging the brain, blood, and other organs as well. Clinicians have recognized that a lot of patients that have COVID are exhibiting confusion,、uh, not necessarily aware of their environment appropriately. Some are having seizures. So there are some central nervous system abnormalities. And as you know, a lot of patients are exhibiting loss of sense of smell, and that is a direct connection to the brain as well. In some infected patients, coronavirus attacks the central nervous system. The body's main system of nerve control consisting of the brain and spinal cord. When severe, this can cause seizures, sudden violent attacks of an illness, often affecting the heart or brain. It seems that COVID 19 type diseases are not going to disappear anytime soon. Reminding us of the importance of the scientific research we've heard about today. And the importance of boosting your immunity, which reminds me of today's quiz question. You asked me how many white blood cells per microliter the human body has. I said C, 70,000.
Well, if that was true, you've definitely boosted your immunity, Georgina, because the correct answer is C, just 7,000. Today, we've been discussing the strains or slight variations of the virus which causes COVID-19. COVID-19 has a previous disease called SARS as its precursor, a situation which existed before something and caused the development of that thing. Researchers use the idea that the virus had passed to humans from bats as their hypothesis, possible explanation for something which has not yet been proved true. By identifying new virus strains, doctors hope unexplained cases can act as a red flag, a warning sign of danger to prevent further outbreaks. Knowing about new strains is increasingly important as we find out more about how coronavirus attacks the body's central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord, which in some patients can cause seizures, sudden violent attacks of an illness, especially affecting the heart or brain. So try to stay safe, wash your hands and remember to join us again soon. Bye for now. Bye. Six Minute English from the BBC. Hi everyone, we hope you enjoyed that video and thank you very much for watching. We have so many more just like it, so if you don't want to miss a single one, make sure to subscribe and we will see you regularly. Hope to see you soon. Bye guys.